For those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to episode number 270 of Category 5 Technology TV. Great to see you. Tuesday, the 20th of November, 2012. Wow, time flies. Does. Mm -hmm. How you been? Oh, not too shabby. Yeah. Yeah, and Feels you? Feels like it's been a while. I'm doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Robbie's forgotten to shave. Just keep him warm up in these uh, Canadian winters. Supposed to get snow next week, so i got to be ready for it. About time. This is like my, my face muff. You know, like, like it's like earmuffs just kind of move to my face. Doesn't make it any warm. less embarrassing. It's, it just makes me warmer. And what do you think? What do you think of the face muff? <laughs> What's new? Um, you know, not a heck of a lot. I was no. trying to think of when I was here last. And then I remembered like it was decades. right before I left to go to, to Winnipeg. Yes. So that was like only a month Big ago. Trip. And I, I, I say only, but I mean, it seems like it was so long ago. I know. Yeah, but... Keep them well. But other than that, you know, good nothing. Trip, yeah, it was fun. Good, you know, saw good. the parentals. Yeah. Gave high fives and stuff. Awesome. We're good for another year. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, chat room. Nice to see everybody. Uh, I see Pyrus Rock and A. Jameson, 5579. Drumstick. Uh, Treed Stang. Hey, it's nice to see you. Treed Stang likes the beard. Well, he has to say nice things. Really does. I really mean, does. how many mean things can you say to Robbie when it's Robbie's show? I mean, when you're a, genu a genuinely nice person and not like me. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> Hello to Jot as well. Good to see you in the chat room. Join us in the chat room. It's Category 5 on Freenode or join us uh, just through our website, category5.tv. Uh, lots of exciting stuff coming up tonight. We're going to be looking mm -hmm. at how to create an awesome presentation. doesn't matter if you're on Mac, Windows, Linux, any, Very cool. you know, anything that supports Flash. Mm -hmm. You will be able to do this. Okay. So stick around. That's going to be really, really exciting what do you got coming cool. up oh i have so many cool things would you like to hear them i would let's go All right. uh coming up in the newsroom later folks xbmc 12.0 will have improved hd sound live tv yes. and pvr capabilities robbie has been waiting for this <laughs> want fast internet move to kansas Okay. Trying to book the family to come visit for Christmas? Let's hope you're not running Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. A mm. computer from the 50s, which still works, is going on display in the National Museum of Computing. Wow. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. They truly don't make them like they used to, do they? No. No, I was just thinking that too, like running from the 50s. Can you and, imagine? And these days everyone's like, maybe your computer will last three years. And three people years are like, you're lucky. dude, your computer is so old. Yeah. Antiquated. What is that? Windows <laughs> 7? It's ancient. Get with the times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, just to mention as well, uh, our mobile site. There it is. M.cat5.tv. Make sure you check that out. It is awesome to be able to use your mobile device to check out Category 5 TV. Uh, also, um, we ha uh, love to receive your postcards. And Krista, this is your first time seeing the postcard wall. Um, mm -hmm. But those of you who are watching from home on Backstage Pass, you can actually see. Uh, we've got a fair number of postcards that have come in, and we really appreciate receiving those. I'm looking up there, and I see mm -hmm. Illinois, USA, Lottie in Finland, Rochester, New York. I see... Malaysia? Uh, yeah. Uh, St. Paul. Uh, we've got Australia up here. I'm just looking Very up at the cool. wall here. Uh, so we would love to receive your postcard just to say hello. Uh, you can do that by mailing, and I'll let Krista say it, because... 
She's got such a sweet tone to her voice. Always say such nice things. <laughs> you can send your postcards to Category 5 Technology TV. That's at P.O. Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, and Canada, L4N7W7. Thanks, Krista. No problem. So we got to take a quick break. Don't forget, uh, we have your viewer questions coming up a little bit later on the show. Uh, we're playing around with a little bit of a change in our format because people have seemed to really enjoy the fact that we've been doing the features off the top of the show. So we're going to be uh, talking about presentations shortly after the break. Uh, and then we're going to have your viewer questions a little later on. If we have time, I might have some prizes for you as well. So Neither. stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. I almost forgot. I was distracted, which <laughs> happens... <laughs> Which happens. Easily. <laughs> oh, look, a squirrel. Shiny. I want to show you something that I thought was really, really cool, something that could go on your Christmas list. Eh? Eh? eh. Check this out. Time? Why didn't they think about this before? It seems like one of those things that they should have thought about before. I don't know. Enlighten us. Well, what is it? What is it? I don't this know. is an MP3 player that plugs into the lighter socket in your car. Ooh. It has a built-in transmitter. Mm-hmm. So you set the frequency right. and tune it in on your... Mm -hmm. You act like you've seen this before. I've seen something like you it. Have, I actually own something like this you before. This? Yeah, oh, well. Not this one. It's probably not this fancy. Hers is way cooler. It's no, made it's, by it's, Apple. No, uh, it's probably... Mine was about $2, but it works really? the same. They, they, they're incredible because you just plug it in and then you stick an SD card in here. The reason that oh, I was looking at this... Not as fancy. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, so take an SD cooler. card. 16 gigabytes? Oh, yeah. No, actually, it's not HD. Uh, it's not a, uh, SDHC. Mm -hmm. So it would be SD. So at a maximum two gigs, possibly four. But it, it just sticks in the side there. Mm -hmm. Plugs into the lighter, so there's no batteries. This is the problem that I've had with the MP3 player in the car, mm -hmm. always having to change AAA right. batteries. It always dies when you're on a road trip, guaranteed. I just thought it was a really, really cool thing. But check this out. Also a USB port. Ah. So you can plug in a USB flash drive, load it up with MP3s. That is cool. Good to go. That's way cooler than the one I have. I, I Anything else I can get? It I'll has trade the you. aux input. I'll trade you. It's pretty neat, though, and it remembers where you were, because what are the, one of the things that we were trying to accomplish in our car is that there's not enough Christmas music on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> the kids love it. I love you it. You say that now. Um, wait till the 24th of December. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Then you don't mind. Uh, but... Uh, so recording internet radio to MP3 using Streamripper, very cool thing mm -hmm. to be able to do, and it just saves like one big long massive file. So it's like four hours of music. So the old MP3 player would stop right. when you turn off the MP3 player, and then when you press when play start. again, it starts back at the beginning of the tracks. Yeah. This thing doesn't; it's, it remembers where you were. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. If anyone, you know, I'll, I'll post links if I find some uh, for international ways to to purchase such a device post them in the show notes for episode number 270 but that was just kind of That's a pretty cool neat little find for a cheap little device that gives you some cool functionality in the car our car just so you know still has a cassette deck oh way cool like like i'm talking like it's the like stereo antique. cassettes like almost back there with eight tracks mm -hmm. that's pretty cool yeah so this was a good find <laughs> good upgrade good upgrade fancy dancy <laughs> Would you like to learn about uh, presentations? Would I? Have you ever been in a situation where you, maybe it's a customer? Mm -hmm. The customers always, they, they see, and that's, how's that for generalization? But every customer every always customer. does this. Everywhere. Always. They want it cheap, and they want it to be amazing, animated, presentation, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's been times when I've really wanted to be able to make a good presentation. I'm not that gifted at the graphical end of things. So PowerPoint, or in my case, I use Impress, which is a free mm -hmm. alternative. Uh, I'll post links in the show notes. But uh, being able to create something like you see the professionally done ones, right. you know the ones that I'm talking about. We're going to learn how to do that tonight. First, cool. we're going to kick it off with a little bit of a cartoon, uh, an actual Powtoon. This is 
created on the software that we're going to be showing you tonight. Um, and uh, so stick around. We're going to show you how this is all cool. done. So you know what it's like when you want to impress your clients with an amazing presentation? You take your graphs, add some clip art, and spice the whole thing up with some fancy transitions. But somehow, it doesn't always have the desired effect. So one day you come across one of those super cool promotional cartoons and you think to yourself, wow, something like that would definitely catch my client's attention. But then you find out that it costs like a gazillion bucks to make. So you start scouring the web for a tool that can create extraordinary presentations for free. It's just that nothing out there is just quite the thing you're looking for. This tool just moves pictures around and this one swivels so much you get seasick. And to operate this one, you have to be a rocket scientist. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a tool that allows you to create professional-looking animated presentations and cartoon-style videos just by dragging and dropping stuff onto a page? Well, now there is. Powtoon is a new tool that is so simple and intuitive, it allows anyone who ever used PowerPoint or Keynote to easily evolve their presentation to awesomeness. Powtoon contains themes of animated characters, props, and cool transitions, which you can just drag and drop onto your slide and create eye-catching and fun presentations that can be presented in person or turned into animated videos with the click of a button to be shared on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Now your presentations will definitely keep your audience hooked. Powtoon brings awesomeness to your presentation. Created using Powtoon. So tonight we're actually going to take a look at that because, you know, the, cool. the skeptic in me says, okay, it can't possibly be that easy and that awesome. So let's, mm -hmm. let's actually take a look. We're going to actually sign up for a free account right now okay. uh, at Powtoon. So this is powtoon.com, T-O-O-N, and you see the sign up for free button there. And you'll see that there are commercial uh, packages that you can get to remove advertising and things like that. But in order to get started, you don't need those. You can sign up for free. If you're an educator, click on this link right here, and this is going to give you access to, uh, to their educator package, and it's, uh, it's substantially cheaper, and it will help you to be able to use this stuff in, uh, in school, you know, if you want to show your students and things. So now let's sign up for a free account. Really, really quick, easy sign up process. Just enter my name. And uh, choose my username there. I'll just put in category five, use my email address. And easy breezy, throw in a password. Couldn't get much easier than this. Who am I? What do I do? I want to go with like professor. We'll just go other because. TV show host isn't in there. Well, that's sad. I know. <laughs> so let's go for it. All right, there we go. It sent me an email. So let's uh, just check what it says. There we go. All I got to do is click there to activate. So let's see what there is to it. Brilliant. <laughs> For some reason, it has frozen up my, my video there, playback, but I am in and activated. Let's take a look. There we go. So the first thing that I see is this screen that is my playground. So now anytime I go to Powtoon, now that I'm logged in, it loads up my playground. Give it a try. Cool. Check it out. Once I've clicked on start, I can choose either presentation mode, which is to create you know, a slideshow where I have to actually advance the slides, mm -hmm. or I can select movie mode. So it's going to I create something that it's you. going to, yeah, you're going to set the timer on each slide and then it's going to proceed to the next timer. So because of the nature of what we do, I'm going to go with movie mode and let's give it a name. We'll call this. Um, so what we're going to actually do tonight, we're going to pretend that we're a computer shop. I think it'd be fun to pretend that we're creating an ad to put up on YouTube for our little computer shop out here in Barrie. So All we're going right. to actually take that concept and put together some kind of a, a spot here. So we're going to call this my computer shop ad number one. Check out my computer shop. Okay, now we're going to just go with no thanks. Let's just create. We're not going to use a, a predefined style. Now let's open that up. I'm going to go edit. And now this is 
the Powtoon interface. Well, it's right up in your web browser, so I'm just using Chrome here, Google Chrome. And there we have our starting template. So the first thing that I like to do down over on the bottom right here, now I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to reload my cursor so that you can actually see my mouse cursor here. There we go. You should be able to see that now on the screen. Okay, so down here on the bottom right, there is an option to change your background. So first thing I want to do is just click on one of those and I can set that up however I like. So now up here we've got our characters, our text, anything that we want to put in. We're starting with our first slide. You'll see on the left hand side here, we're on our first slide, there is only one. And we're going to grab a really frustrated looking guy and just drop it onto <laughs> our canvas. Resize it however I like. Let's add some text, say. Frustrated with your computer. We can resize that just like you would expect. Change the text up here. Change the color. It's very easy Weiss a wig. What you see is what you get kind of editing. Grab a prop here. Let's throw a nice little laptop computer in there that he can be getting frustrated over. You see that all this stuff is coming in absolutely free for me to be able to use this stuff um, because I'm going to be exporting and it's going to have their little ad at the, at the end there created with Powtoon. You see a computer there? I know there are some. I don't. There's, I saw there, a there we go. Okay. So I've, I've laid a laptop in here. So that's the computer that he's frustrated with, but it's facing the wrong way. So I'm going to hold in my right click button and I'm going to go flip. Now it's facing the correct direction. Fancy. Yeah. So <laughs> now let's work on, so we want to actually create transitions, mm -hmm. make it so that things kind of pop in and they right. don't just all of a sudden appear on the canvas. So I've highlighted frustrated with your computer and I'm going to click on this little icon right there, which means it's going to fade in. I'm going to change that to pop in. Okay. And I'm going to change it to pop out. Now this man here, I'm going to click on him and I'm going to click on him. I'm going to use a hand. So I'm going to turn on hand and I'm going to go left. So a hand is actually going to come in and move <laughs> him from the right hand side to the left hand side. Then we're going to do the same on the right so that this is the way that it ends. We're going to use that hand effect again. I'm going to drag the timeline just a little bit because you saw what was happening there is that he was extending beyond the end, so there was no yeah. transition effect. So, so far, if I push play, that's what I have so far. That's pretty okay. neat. Pretty neat. Yeah. Cool, eh? So what I want to do is I, I want to stop that laptop from popping in. I want it to look like okay. it's coming in with him. So we're going to change that to move left. We're not going to use a hand because that would create a second hand. So now if the timing is correct, which it's not, it starts too late. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click on that laptop. We're going to start it earlier in this really easy to use timeline. Let's see that. There we go. That's quite a bit better. So the slide is long. You know, so if we we're going to voice this, we'd be frustrated with your computer. So what we can do is over here on the right hand side, I'm going to push the minus button and we're going to shrink things down to about five seconds long. So now, again, I've broken my transition, so I'm just going to shrink those a little bit. On the right hand side of each item, that uh, each element. There we go. So now it looks like this. Oh, <laughs> did something weird there with my laptop. Let's see. fix that. Okay, so the timing is a bit better. Let's fix the laptop. So, hmm. What did you do? What did I do? Uh, I, apparently I broke the laptop. This easy peasy. It's not that method hard. Of, well, it's just you. It's you that's broken. I know. I know. <laughs> I did. I literally <laughs> broke the laptop. <laughs> I understand, understand how doubt, you got it to go over there. It's so easy to use, though. I mean, I can I can easily highlight and delete and drag and drop and right click and flip, and you know, it's easy breezy. It's Let's very, see if that very ironic to the situation. It's a laptop that's causing you pain. Yeah. There. Okay. Beautiful. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> did you see where I? I don't know if it's if it matters, but it is in beta. 
there there could be the occasional little glitch but that could have also been very much me but there we go okay so there's our first slide frustrated with your computer Phew, get him out of there all right <laughs> now up here we're going to create our next slide nice and easy so grab a happier looking dude there we go he's happy scale that in oh we have a great hairstyle love the hair That's i nice. know guys with that hair <laughs> And see, all I'm doing is I'm grabbing props, I'm grabbing characters, grabbing words. Mm -hmm. This particular word one I've, I've gotten has got a kind of a, a scaling effect, right. kind of flying in effect. So now if I edit this. Oh, it's neat that it actually us. shows you yeah, it's got right nice in the box preview. here um, exactly what you're going to be seeing. And let's, we'll just leave that as black text. Looks good. Call us. Let's make it big. So now for this slide, so far, boom, just like that. So we want to give our con contact information, our company information. Some kind of tagline. We're a computer shop now, right? There we go. Shorten this slide down again. There we go. See how easy it is to manipulate, though, eh? Um, I'm just kind of watching in awe right now. I just look, just to be able to like drag and drop it's things. It's so and simple. Why was it never this simple mm -hmm. to create these kind of amazing presentations? It's always, you know, with using PowerPoint and using a PowerPoint equivalent mm -hmm. software, it's really, really difficult. This is not. I mean, so I'm going to do the hand effect again this time. I'm going to go up. Now I'm going to use the hand again by checking it so that it's no longer crossed off and then go down. So now when I run this slide, there's the hand, moves it in. We'll fix your system fast. Call us. And then next slide. Let's have our guy, we can pick any one of these. Um, I'd like to have one where he's actually, hopefully there's one where he's sitting at a computer. There's a guy kind of reclining. Oh yeah, laying on his side, <laughs> playing guitar. Oh, look at that, there's one where they're sitting on a laptop. Perfect. So, and you can see you can go through and, and just pick something that, that suits you. And there are many, many mm -hmm. different styles up here which we'll very quickly glance at as well. So, grab our text, we'll say serving berry and area, we'll just throw that up here, and here we're very, very close to having a presentation that you might pay two, three thousand dollars to have produced, mm -hmm. and it's ready to go out of the box, so. Five 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 five. www dot our website mm -hmm. is awesome one two three dot com. His email address wow. unfortunately <laughs> wraps to the other to the second line of the. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those addresses. It's one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I just figured I got to think of something that's probably not out there because people are going to click on it. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And if that worked out, really, really quickly, serving the bar berry and area brings in the phone number. You notice how I brought the hand in there? And there we go. Oh, takes it okay. away. Yeah. Cool. And then we can fade everything out just by manipulating the timeline here so that, see what happens there? There's enough time now to 10 seconds that it can fade out. So now if I press play, there we go. Excellent. So now, using your microphone, you're, you're going to record an overdub, so you'll press play all up at the top left, and you'll be able to record yourself saying your script, so be cool. prepared. And then, all you're going to do is just click on the import button up here, and that's actually going to import the right. audio file. So save as an MP3, and you're going to be able to place your audio file on the timeline. It's going to automatically start at the beginning and play all the way through. So time it with your, with your slides. 
So let's press play all and see how this turned out. Are you frustrated with your computer? We're going to fix your system fast. Call us today. Serving Barry and the surrounding areas. Visit our website is awesome. 123.com or call 555555555. <laughs> and that's all there stutter. is to it. Yeah. <laughs> save your work. Always save your work. There it is. Right up at the top. Here's where things get really fun. Really exciting. If that wasn't Can't enough wait. for you. Check this out. Share. Export to YouTube directly. Hmm. Or save an HD video file. Wow. Remember, we're in movie mode. So... Oh, and I've got zoom on here. Not sure if I can get out of it. There we go. So I can actually say with a free account, I get 10 free exports. It's going to come with branding, so that means it's going to have mm-hmm. their logo on it. But again, you can subscribe to a, 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 a an affordable account if you decide that, hey, this is something I'm going to actually use professionally. Right. 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 If you're going to be using it for your company, you can choose to do that. And you might. You might. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's super cool. Um, but to be able to do it for free means that you, as as a home user or perhaps a student, um, uh, even a teacher, if you want to just give it a try. Uh, but then do check out. You know, there are special packages specifically right. for for each level of of user. But I think that's really really cool. It's called Powtoon. It's spelled P O W T O O N. dot com. Check it out. Uh, tell them that Category 5 sent you and uh, just uh, give that a go. I mean, to be able to throw those together so quickly. Right. That was actually really quick for... We just produced... Off I the mean, fly a, there. A 15, 20 <laughs> second commercial and took, you know, what, about 10 minutes with mm-hmm. explaining everything and, and showing you how it's done. Really, really simple. I told you I would show you, so I will just really, really briefly show you. And I want you to play around with this. Give it a try. But you'll see up here that you can actually choose different styles. So if I wanted to use this guy, for example... I've got these other kinds of characters as well that I can use. Uh, we've got these kinds of things. You know, those kinds of tags like that, and you can bring them in with the hand again, and it looks really cool. Uh, and there's even, you know, technical theme where you can throw in things that look very, very technical. Fly those in, pop them in, add sound effects, whatever you want to do. So there's really no end to what you can do. I mean, be creative with mm-hmm. it. It's really, really easy to use. And uh, I'd recommend you check it out. Very cool. We're using it on Linux today through uh, Google Chrome. It is a Flash program. So you can see that uh, it, uh, it's running on my system under Flash 11.5. So give it a try. Powtoon.com. Very cool. I'm like impressed. That? Impressed. Hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, if you check that out, make sure you, uh, you know, even send us a link by email. We'd love to see what, uh, what you end up coming up with on Powtoon. You'll find our website at www.category5.tv. Thanks for joining us tonight. And what do you think? I don't know. What am I, what am I supposed to think? What's the appropriate <laughs> thing to say right now? Uh, well, we can jump into the news if you like. It's probably if I like, yeah. hint, hint, hint. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Just so discombobulated with this all, you know, feature at the beginning and then. Throws you off, eh? We've been doing it the same way for so long. I know. Here we are. It's very, very different. That's okay. Mm-hmm. We'll get used to things. Mm-hmm. So, people. <laughs> Here are the top stories in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The XBMC development team has released the first beta of version 12 of its open source media center software. Codenamed Frodo after the, after the username of one of the project's now retired founders. XBMC 12.0 will be a major update to the media player application will include a completely rewritten audio subsystem, live TV and PVR support, and various other enhancements. The new audio engine, AE Audio Subsystem, which was first merged into XBMC in at the end of May, brings support for high definition surround sound audio. AE also supports high quality 24 bit and floating point audio at up to 384,000 hertz. Among the most anticipated new XBMC features is the ability to watch and record live TV and PVR DVR capabilities. Nice. Wowza. 
Google has begun to connect U.S. homes in Kansas City to super fast broadband, offering resident speeds up to one gigabyte per second. One gigabit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one, gigab- one gigabit is fast enough. <laughs> Why not go for gigabytes? Might as well. Why not? All it takes is a slip of the tongue. (laughs) (laughs) People living in the Fiberhood area of Hanover Heights are among the first to use this service. They are reporting speeds of up to 700 megabits per second. Wow. The product poses a challenge to established cable companies, which typically charge more money with slower connections. Google says it hopes its package will persuade people to spend longer on the web and try out new services. I'll more, say more couch potatoes. Could you people. imagine? <laughs> yeah, but could you imagine what we could do with seven hundred megabits a second? Everything you're talking you have like, like a million windows open. No, but like streaming flashing. video, we we do what we do with two megabits per second mm-hmm. up. If you had seven hundred megabits a second, I'm talking 1080p true 1920 by 1080 streaming. That's what I'd be doing down in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> Why hip happening? Why hip, not Ontario? Happening. They maybe didn't want like the flood of people, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We still don't even have maybe, proper fiber here. Maybe Kansas isn't a high internet usage area. I have no. So idea they're trying to like stats. lure them in. Is that what, with gigabit speeds? I don't know. <laughs> Will you subscribe to the internet if you we give you the fastest in the world? It's possible. That might that think might about it. Convince them. Maybe we have viewers from Kansas. Do you mean to tell me I can know. download an entire season of So You Think You Can Dance in three seconds? You watch So You Can Think You Can Dance? So I you did. think you can dance. What? And now the season's over, well, so you no, can Well, no, this anymore? season was really disappointing to me. But that's a whole other topic. I should blog about we won't my touch disappointment that. in this no. season of So You Think You Can Dance. You don't need to. <laughs> All right, I won't. Back to the news. <laughs> A flaw in the latest version of the Android operating system has resulted in the month of December disappearing from an app for storing information about contacts. Hmm. Hmm. The flaw affects the People app, which is the default app for keeping contact information on Android devices. The People app calendar goes from November 2012 straight to January 2013. Hmm. And even previous years, too, as, as I've seen on these screenshots. This one was 2011, 2012, 2013. Oops. It's crazy. (laughs) Other Google calendars are unaffected by the flaw. Phew. Who needs December? Who needs it? Can you imagine if you're trying to plan something out and that's the app that you use? That's sad. Especially since December is like your your busiest month when it comes to like Christmas parties. I work in retail and I just got an Android phone. What do I do? Yeah, life is (laughs) over as you know it. (laughs) Oh, the world's oldest original working digital computer is going on display at the National Museum of Computing in Buckinghamshire. Buckinghamshire? Sure. Sure. The witch... Shire. The Yep. <laughs> the witch, <laughs> as the machine is known, has been restored to clattering and flashing life in a three-year effort. Hmm. In its heyday in the 1950s, the machine was the workhorse of the UK's atomic... You know, it's rude when you giggle. No, I just love that that had it's a rude. heyday. <laughs> That machine there had a heyday. Well, wow. everyone has its heyday. I, know. I mean, it's I'm sure you did. Interesting choice of words. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I can see the transistors. Stop making fun of it. Oh, Old things it. are good. I love it. Are awesome, too. It looks like a happy huh. face. So. Hello. <laughs> we're going to ignore Robbie and continue right. with the news. If that's Understood. okay. With everybody. <laughs> so. Uh, the machine was the workhorse of the UK's Atomic Energy Research Program. A happy accident led to its discovery in a municipal storeroom where it had languished for 15 years. The restoration mm. effort was led by con- conservationist Delwyn Holroyd, who said it was pretty dirty when the machine first <laughs> arrived at Bletchley. Remarkably, he said it had not suffered too much physical damage and the restoration team had been at pains to replace as little as possible. The vast majority of the parts of the machine, including its 480 relays and 828 Decatron tubes, are entirely original, he said. Fascinating. That's amazing. I know. This thing is slow, too. Like, I had read that it was... You can imagine. I don't know if your news story mentioned it, but it, it t- took 10 seconds yeah. to process a single mathematical multiplication. Like, I'm talking like, okay, 2 times 2 is... I hope you really don't mm. need the answer. Like, really quick. Mm. 
That's not that surprising, though. Like, think back. Four. Think back to computers even just 10 years ago, though. Like, what was... Oh, I know. It's amazing and, how And how slow and they were compared to now. And you think of a computer, like, that's 50 years old. Yeah. Of course it's slow. That's really <laughs> slow. R- really, really slow. Like, they could have paid some guy to do that r- really easily. <laughs> what, to add? I suppose you had to start somewhere. Divide. Yeah, like the multiplication and stuff, if that's really... So you just hire a really smart person, is what you're saying they should but have But I could do multiplication days. a lot faster than one piece of mathematics in every 10 seconds. Well, maybe it was a really maybe big number. Maybe because it doesn't get tired. They can run it 24-7. That must be it. Yeah. Does for it need to sleep? Years. Does it need to eat? For 50 years. When you put this thing away for 15 years, you can bring it back and it still works. It's amazing. Well, if you would like, you can get the full story about this news story and the rest at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from, from our community of viewers. If you have a news story that you think is worthy of on-air mention, email us at newsroom at Category5.tv. From the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Krista Wells. Krista, thank you so much. Anytime. Yeah, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Our website is www.category5.tv. So nice to have you here. And I hope you're enjoying yourself tonight. Get your questions in. We'd love to receive your viewer questions. Um, Just before we get into your questions tonight, just a quick mention uh, that we have a Mm one-month free trial of Netflix for you. Uh, This is a special uh, arrangement that we have with Netflix. And uh, if you go for that, cat5.tv slash Netflix, you're going to get a full month free. And uh, they're also going to uh, throw a little bit in the pot to help support Category 5 Technology TV as well. So by subscribing to Netflix, you're in fact helping to support the show that you love so much. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have Netflix already, why not? Why not? What's your problem? It's free for a month. Somebody was talking to me and said, well, I don't know that I really want it. That's why you get it free for a month. So you get it. You you get get a month to go. You try Ah. it. And then you realize that, yes, you do want it. Exactly. And then it's only $8. And if you don't, you just cancel. Yeah, it's 8 bucks. Like, you find that on your couch. Come on. (laughs) Also, tonight's show is brought to you in part by Cordery Electric. You can find them at corderyelectric.com. Please check them out. They're the official electrical contractor of Category 5 Technology TV. If you need any work done in Barrie, the surrounding area, anywhere, pretty much in central Ontario and uh, anywhere in between... Check them out, quarterelectric.com. Fantastic, guys. Great. Yeah. All right, so you got some questions, I'm sure, by this time. It looks like I have lots of questions. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Let's uh, let's jump right in. We have our first question here from Dennis Kelly. He says, Hey, Dennis. Is there a Linux program to control the USB port? Turn it off and on. Receive input? A USB a program for Linux. Well, Linux uh, USB support is, is at the kernel level. So there are a couple of different things that you could do. Now, if you were watching Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 268, which was November 6th, just a couple weeks ago, uh, we looked at a product called Endpoint Protector from endpointprotector.ca. Now, from a security standpoint, that's a great way to um, set things up. And I'll let you in on a little secret. There is, uh, we, we have access to 10 user client licenses. So if you want to give it a try, let me know. I'll, I'll see if I can hook you up. Uh, but that is a software item, like a, a client that installs on your desktops and connects to a centralized server or a virtual server or however you have it set up. And you can restrict USB access. It's built into it. But you can also monitor if people are transferring files over USB. That said, if you don't want to go that route, um, then you can look at disabling USB access in the kernel. I guess it's going to be problematic if you have a USB keyboard and mouse. You might have to go with something like PS2 if that's the case. I'm going to just quickly bring up a website for you. Um, Actually, Nixcraft uh, put together a nice uh, tutorial for you. So, cat5.tv slash no USB. And on that site, this particular one is, is laying out some of the options that you can go with. First one, of course, is to disable the USB storage drivers so that when you plug in, see, because here's the thing. When, and this is probably a good solution because then you can get away with still continuing to use USB keyboard and mouse because it's only the storage driver. Because mm. when you plug in, see, here's, here's the funny thing. Way back when it used to be hard 
on Linux because you plug in a device and you have to mount it and you have to figure out how to get it to work. Right. Now you plug it in, it works. So you're having the exact opposite problem where you want it to not work when someone plugs it in. So you actually, now you're having to create the opposite workaround. Basically, when you plug in a device, Mod Probe says, oh, look, there's a new USB device. What is it? Let's activate it. Mm -hmm. Boom. Done. Right? Which is really nice. Really, really nice. And, you know, USB flash drives. Uh, we've got card readers in all of our systems here. Very, very handy. So what you can do is, is follow the first commands there. And I'm going to post a link for you in the show notes of episode number 270. But this basically tells it to, uh, to ignore USB storage devices. Remove USB storage driver. The next suggestion that they make there is uh, to disable it in your BIOS, or better yet, just add the no USB command to your Grub line uh, to boot your kernel, and that's going to actually disable USB support at, at Grub. But that way, again, is going to disable your keyboard if it's USB. It's going to be okay. all USB things, right? So, so it's a little inconvenient. Yeah, but it can be handy <laughs> if you're in an environment where you don't want people to be able to plug in USB flash right. drives. That's true. And you can always re reboot, press E on the Grub line and remove that line. So it's not a perfect security solution, but... Um, hmm. A couple of ideas there for you anyways. It's cat5.tv slash no USB. And hopefully that points you in the right direction. Great article from them anyways. Good, 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 good. Here's another question from Dareboy58. Says, is it possible to make hey. a show about uh, Debian SID? Uh, Debian says it's... Uh, says it's unstable and not up to date, but for my six month experience on Debian, I don't say that. I had two mm. years experience on Arch Linux and I prefer a lot more Debian SID with Arch Linux. I was tired every two or three month rebuild. Um, Having to, I had to rebuild their system. Reinstall the operating system every few months. Because yeah. an update scrap on a <laughs> system. I yeah. made a little video on YouTube. Um, on Debian SID. If you want cool. to look at it, here's the link. Okay, I'll check it out and uh, and I'll certainly be happy to post a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, so Dareboy58, okay, first of all, Debian is a Linux distribution yes. and SID is kind of the third one down the, ro down the line when it comes to stability. Debian okay. is very, very interesting because as opposed to, you know, like Windows and Ubuntu and uh, Mac OS, they quite often you know it's it's like major releases so mm -hmm. windows 7 windows 8 ubuntu 12.04 ubuntu 12.10 mm -hmm. they're major releases that typically require in in a lot of cases require you to reinstall your operating okay. system ubuntu or linux uh, debian on the other hand takes kind of a trickle down effect mm -hmm. uh, kind of stance on things so you install debian stable and then there's Debian testing, and there's Debian SID, which is unstable. Mm -hmm. So new applications come into SID, they trickle down the line once they have been tested a little bit, they go into testing, and then they go into stable once they're considered to be oh, stable. Okay. So your computer's constantly getting the latest updates, but only after they've been tested through mm -hmm. this kind of filtering process. Oh, that's nice. So with Debian stable, uh, it is, that's squeeze, it's, the, you're basically, it's a really fully operating operating system. Mm -hmm. Testing means that they're going to be doing some work on some of the stuff. They may be messing around with stuff that could break your system so that when you run an update, it could break something. Right. SID, when they say unstable, just so you understand, Dareboy58, they're not saying that it doesn't work. They're saying that there's a lot of things about it that could potentially cause harm to your system. One of those is that they're not maintaining the security patches on SID. So that means that if a major security exploit happens, um, that is going to get patched into stable and possibly testing, but not likely SID um, mm. right away because testing is where that takes place and below, right? So SID is more of, it's a bit of an elitist kind of, you know, it, you can get, it's bleeding edge. You get the absolute latest stuff because as it comes out, you know, the brand new latest version of everything gets put into SID gets run for a little while, and then if it works, it mm -hmm. gets moved into testing, and then if they've got all the bugs worked out, then they move it into stable. So it's a process. So stable doesn't have all those bleeding edge stuff, but you know that it's rock solid, and it goes okay. down the line. So, so that's what it, what it means. <laughs> hey, chat room, just watching you a little bit. So, 
So oh, yeah, that's that's essentially what that means. So uh, Sid, we could show it on the air, but I wouldn't I wouldn't personally feel confident in recommending that you run it because it is something that you're you're. And when I say elitist, there Agamotto, I mean you're a bit of a power user, or you you understand when you install Sid, you could potentially break your system just with a simple update, because something in there could break something, and you understand that, and you're taking that risk. So it's not something that you would install on a on a production system, something that I'm working on at work, right? Makes sense. Thank you very much for the question. Um, he also says mm. it's a very good show and he can't wait for the next week. Thanks. Uh, there's a question from Lane. Uh, Lane says, I've, been try I've tried using Resync to remove the source file after copying the original to another computer. Is there a way to hide the source file and put in a placeholder, uh, grayed out, instead of deleting it on the source computer? The idea is mm. to have our ideas to create a situation like MS Briefcase. I got gotcha. you. Rsync um, is a tool to synchronize oh, two sorry. file systems. I yeah, I, I glanced over it. I could see it. Um, <laughs> It's an interesting way of looking at rsync because you can you can just have it sync the whole file system. It sounds to me like you're wanting to clear the space that it, that the local copy is using, which I'd want to know more about the scenario. But I w I would approach that a as perhaps a bash cell, uh, shell script. You'd want to create something that verifies the data has been correctly written, and then moves the source files out to another folder or as you say renames them but then you're getting into some issues with your rsync then because it might try to sync the uh, the renamed files so it would be interested in knowing more about why you want to go about it that way is it to free up space on the de on the source so you're moving stuff rather than backing up stuff because to hmm. me that wouldn't make a lot of sense because I want rsync to back up my stuff to a remote server it's not going to do it over and over again because our sync is designed, this is what's so neat about it, it checks the files before it does the backup. And it says, okay, well, this one hasn't changed since the last time I did a sync. Oh, that's neat. So Doesn't I'm not going to back it up. Yet. I'm only going to back up the files that have changed or the files that have been newly created. Or in some cases with, with some of the variables that you'll choose on the command line, it may delete files from the local copy if the, or from the remote copy if they've been deleted on the local machine, which can be dangerous if you're mm -hmm. not careful. So um, I, I would want to know more, uh, but it, definitely a bash script is going to be required in a case like that because you're doing some very specific stuff that, uh, that rsync itself is not quite meant to do. Similarly, uh, similar to rsync is rdiff, which is another s script that uh, does what I was saying about backing up just what has changed, but instead mm -hmm. of backing up whole files, it backs up only the bits that have changed, which is interesting when you get into large yeah. files. So, you know, you get a, let's say you've got a spreadsheet that's uh, huge. I, I don't know that the spreadsheet is a good example, but a text file is a good example where, you know, if it's a 100 meg text file, just for the sake of a crazy argument, and you change one word, mm -hmm. rsync will then re-upload the whole 100 megs. That's great. But our yeah. diff will only move the one word oh. as, a, as a diff change, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So our diff is a good one to look at if your file system support it. Yeah. It's kind of neat. <laughs> Agamotto was wondering with with your stylus here on the Wacom 4, the Intuos 4, what are you drawing? Oh, secrets. Yeah. This is how she works, folks. And this Robbie's is... beard. I'm trying to <laughs> draw it Clicking and send it out as a Christmas and... card to y'all. <laughs> um, Get your questions in. Krista's watching for them. Live at category5.tv. Oh, here is a question from uh, David, hey, David in Minneapolis. Awesome. He says, nice hello, Robbie and co-host. Hello. Uh, I've watched a lot of the shows. I like your having guests on to talk about many great topics. Yeah, cheers. I was wondering if we might be able to have a segment on terminal tips each week. I bring this up because sure. I've noticed when there are no emails or questions to answer, the show loses my interest a little and thought it, Mine too. it would. Mine too. I get so bored at that point. He actually like, just kind guys, of no questions. sometimes Fine. gets up and leaves and watches TV and then yeah. the co-host is stuck here going, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. And we try to keep a flow to the show. We're live. Mm. 
Um, so that's that's how it goes sometimes. But we certainly try to mm-hmm. keep a flow. Like sometimes when I'm angry at Robbie and I just don't want to talk to him, there's nobody banter. Like, so it's a little and that's bit when people more on stale. Facebook say, Krista looks angry. Krista looks like she's not even paying attention to him. And she's like, yeah, I'm just really, I'm just angry at Robbie. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, he also says, I for one would like to see more in the way of how to's on the show, how to nav- navigate or set up things, some tips on changing settings within, uh, within Linux. Uh, beyond that, maybe some links to watch or read on. Love yeah. the show. We'd love to. Uh, David, thank you so much for the email. Mm -hmm. You start your email by saying you love how we've been having some guests on the show lately, and and we absolutely love doing that. Um, Mm -hmm. We have different formats to the show, so when we have guests, we pretty much have an interview, and we look at their product or whatever it is that that we're talking to them about, and then we have Mm -hmm. your viewer questions and whatever other things that we want to get into. On the other hand, like tonight is a good example where we're giving you a presentation of something and, and giving you a bit of a tutorial on how it works because we don't have a guest tonight. It's a different format to the show. Right. So we, we have a one hour show to work with. So that's, that, you know, that's how we try to make it flow. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. And we'll certainly take a look at the Linux terminal. Something that I've, I tend to shy away from a little bit because um, sometimes you know, we, get, we get mixed messages here, right? Because some people say, we don't want to see the terminal. We want to see the GUI because the terminal right. scares us and makes us think that Linux is a, a hard operating system to use but I can hear you and, and yeah, I use the terminal a lot. So um, right. I'd be happy to show you some stuff. That said, I did get a tweet today that stood out to me and I thought it was ironic that, uh, that your question came in. I'm gonna bring this up right now. Uh, this comes to us from at Mike ITT who says uh, that there's a book from William E. Schatz Jr. from uh, linuxcommand.org. Uh, and it's the Linux command line. So let's uh, let's take a quick look at that. What what strikes me as interesting about this, and you're asking about the command line, go to linuxcommand.org, and when you're there, this is basically a tutorial site all about the Linux command terminal. Okay, at the bottom here you'll see the book. If you click on the book. Sure, you can go to your local library and get it. You can buy it here. You can do that. But look at this. It's released under Creative Commons. And you can actually download it as a PDF absolutely free. So I'm going to click on that. LinuxCommand.org. Good resource for you. And there's the book. Absolutely free. And it takes an interesting approach to the Linux uh, terminal. So it's going to take you right through some of the real basic stuff. And then you're going to be getting into some more advanced things as well. So only reason I want to show you that, one, it's, it's awesome and we love supporting other uh, Creative Commons uh, producers. But uh, also I think that's a great resource for you as somebody mm-hmm. who's interested in the Linux terminal. Uh, so check that out, linuxcommand.org and anyone else who's watching who would like to obtain a free copy of that ebook. Pardon me. Cool. Yeah. Oh, we have time? Yes, we have time. Sure, we always have time. Oh. Except for in five minutes from now, I'd have to and say then no. then we have no time. I'd have to say no. Okay, well, <laughs> not that flexible, I guess. But, I know. Hmm. Uh, this one looks, oh, no, it is a question. Okay. Uh, it is from Mihail. Hey, Mihail. Uh, hello, Robbie. I have a question about Zorin 6 Core, how to configure Doki. Doki? Doki. Uh, my second Doki. question is, why do not these games for Linux like Windows? Why are there not games on Linux like there Windows? There we go. There are. And check out, I seriously recommend, check out Steam for Linux. It's coming, folks. So we're going to start seeing some really sweet games that were previously unavailable on Linux. And we're seeing a push. Uh, NVIDIA is really starting to push really high graphic performance on Linux. So guess what's coming, mm-hmm. folks? Uh, let's cha- take a quick look, and we'll go back to the first question as well. I think it's, I just want to see, Steam for Uh, Steam for Linux itself is in beta. Yeah, steamforlinux.com is not the official site, but what I wanted to tell you is that because Steam is in beta, and mm-hmm. it's a closed beta, and there's only a certain number of people who are allowed to participate, mm-hmm. here's a site that sort of goes into it from a fan perspective um, and shows you some of the things that we can look forward to. So we are looking forward to having some incredible games available on Linux. Uh, but and that's through Steam. That's just one platform. But there were things... I did a series on uh, video games that are available through 
uh, Synaptic Package Manager. These are gems. Synaptic Package Manager is a front end to all your repositories on Linux. It's so vast that it's really it's intimidating. You don't know what to install unless you know what to look for. Things like Tremulous, which is now you know this incredible game. They've renamed it, um, and and it's astounding as far as you know if you're into first person shooters and things like that. Um, there are so many great games that uh, that you can find. For Linux, I'd be happy to put together a list. So, if that's something that interests you as a viewer, let me know. Pop us an email live at category5.tv. Maybe we'll reevaluate the position of uh, gaming on Linux and and maybe dedicate a show to that. I know Krista would cool. really like that. There's just funny how excited you got when you're like, "Oh, games!" I'm excited because Steam for <laughs> Linux. This is like it, this is something that we've known has been coming for a long time. There's been rumors, right, that Steam this is a distribution platform for games. Mm-hmm that has previously been on Windows and people love it is now coming to Linux. It's in beta. It's a real thing. It's happening now. It's not speculation. So that is very exciting. Yes, yes, we know about the beta program being hacked and being available to all. And I'm kind of alluding to that. (laughs) But we'll just leave it at that. Thanks, guest 5410. Yes. (laughs) So we have time for the first part of his question. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, how to configure Doki? Or is oh, that a, uh, more of a... Doki. Do- uh, whatever. Doki. Dorky, Doki. Dorky. Doki. <laughs> how do you configure? <laughs> All right. Yeah, Doki is uh, is a dock bar for, for Linux. Now, because you're on Zorin OS, though, uh, it's already included because the Mac theme uses that in order to give you that Mac look. So you can use the, no, uh, the Zorin look changer which is an amazing way. We've looked at it in previous shows, so I don't need to bring that up. But as far as Docky is concerned, I mean, let's just go into terminal because we've been asked to use the terminal a little bit more. And let's type the word Docky. And it's as simple as that. On Zorin OS, it's already installed. Okay. So I run it, and you'll see what pops up down at the bottom here is a Mac dock bar style thing. So if we like that and we want to keep it, let's get rid of the panel that's down here. We can go delete this panel. I don't want to do it because then I'm, I'm going to be without my panel. But that's what you would do is delete the bottom panel. And then you would set it up so the docky loads automatically when you turn on your computer. So we go system administration, uh, no, system preferences, startup applications. And we'll go add. We'll call this one just for Krista, dorky. The command, (laughs) on the other hand, is docky. Okay. And then we add that. So now it's done. It's in there. And now it's going to load at the beginning of, you know, when we first turn on our computer every time. But we're going to still have the GNOME panel up at the top, which is cool, right? So again, you need to delete this one down here, delete this panel. And then this will be the only one that's there. So, and then you can just drag and drop things to it. You can move things around, you know, it's nice and easy. It is what it is. It's a dock bar, easy to use. All right, that's docky. Or, Dorky. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Cool. Fantastic, cool. eh? Hey, thanks for being on the show tonight. Oh, well, it's nice to come back every once in a while. Yeah. Let's see if Drawbot is uh, interested in a visit to the chat room. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's new? Are you, anything going on? Business is busy. You're yeah, no things. Before. Work is, work is uh, pretty busy right now. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, life is pretty slow. Yeah. So that's slow paced other good than that. or bad yeah. or both. Cool. Yeah. Everyone's well, all excited right now. I know. Everybody's <laughs> just getting screaming excited in the chat room. Drawbot goes into the chat room because I know you're there because I told you at the top of the show yeah. I alluded to the fact that I was gonna be giving something away and I told you to log into the chat room. So for those of you in the chat room, let's see who we got. Number eighteen is Scorpio fifty five. My man, congratulations. Lucky, lucky. You tonight, my friend, have picked up a copy of ESET, Nod32 Ooh. Antivirus version 5. So pop me an email live at category5.tv and I will email you the serial key for that and uh, you'll be able to activate that on your Windows system. Beautiful. Keep you safe for another year, a whole year of service from ESET. Mm-hmm. And it works great. It's fantastic. It is good software, yeah. If mm-hmm. I have any, any Windows system that I've got, it's got to have ESET on it. I mean... 
we're, we're a lot safer on the Linux systems and, and you on your Mac. But yeah, I was going to say, even I have a Mac, and I noticed that it did pick up uh, you actually, so a you handful run, of you things. You set on your Mac yeah. as well. And, yeah. and, it and, and normally you're not stuff. worried about it because, you know, Macs can't get viruses. Not sure. true. Um, but, yeah, it did actually pick up, like, a, about a handful of things. But cool. things I wouldn't have ever noticed it. So. Well, that's good. Awesome. That's what it's meant to do. Congratulations, Congrats. Scorpio 55. All you got to do is just, again, email live at category5.tv uh, just so that we can reply back with your license information. So have a great week, everybody. Uh, Krista is back next week. again next week. Twice in a row. Two times in a row. Mm. Lucky or unlucky, I'm sorry. Depending on whether you're me or you. Yeah. Lucky. Unlucky. Not so lucky. <laughs> she makes fun of me, folks. So it's our thing. Yeah. I make fun of you. <laughs> oh, that's our thing? You leave oh, after the show and cry. I didn't realize that that was our thing. I just thought that you were being mean to me. I always feel so much better about myself after the show. <laughs> Offload all the hatred and anger. <laughs> Have a great week. Krista, I do enjoy having you here. So thanks for being so here. Good. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. See you guys. See you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local show times in your area at category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.